Hi everyone, Azrael Knight here, and today we're going to take a look at Nikon's 50mm 1.8G, as well as ADOC's CHS50 Art Series Film. Before we get to the reviews though, I want to tell you about a major giveaway I'm having. I have this newsletter, which is basically a recap of everything I publish the previous month, uh, plus a few exclusive tidbits here and there. Um, so every month I have a giveaway for those who are subscribed, sometimes multiple giveaways, and entering is very simple. All you need to do is one, sign up to the newsletter, and two, read it each month to see if you've won. Now you'd think that was easy peasy, but a lot of people have missed the second part, that is, reading the newsletter to see if they've won. Uh, because of that, I have a lot of unclaimed prizes, and so I'm going to have two giant prize packages at the end of this month. This month's prize will include a yet-to-be-named 35mm camera, two rolls of film, and a copy of my box set. Two people will receive this prize package. Just go to the link in the description, sign up, and make sure you read the newsletter on September 1st to see if you've won. Now that I have that out of the way, I think you're in for a treat this episode. I'm reviewing both a lens and a film, and doing so while I take a trip down memory lane. Let's get started. Recently, I was in Mournville, Alberta, and if you've never heard of it, I'm not surprised. It's a small town north of Edmonton, and in the 1980s, I grew up there. I grew up in Edmonton as well, but a good chunk of my early childhood I spent in Mournville. I haven't been back much, um, only a few times actually, and the last time I was there was July 25th, 2013, eight years ago, almost to the day. Here are some images from my 2013 trip. As you can see, I captured some random small town imagery, but I also got images of this burnt down church and this church on Main Street undergoing a facelift. Overall, it was a pretty nostalgic experience, even though a lot had changed. I wasn't sure at the time if I'd ever be back, but I decided to visit again after this happened. The blaze at the St. John Baptist Church happened early this morning, and Kim Smith is live in Morinville, north of Edmonton. Canada Day celebrations that were planned for tomorrow are now cancelled, he said. Instead, they're going to open up the community centre as an area for people to come and share stories and grieve together. Now, we've been talking to people this morning who call this church the heart of the community. It was built in 1907. Firefighters responded shortly after 3 a.m. at 1.5 50 firefighters and 10 trucks were on scene. Mournville Fire Department had help from surrounding communities, including Edmonton. This fire gutted the church, and it's now considered a complete loss. Several nearby homes and businesses were evacuated as a precaution. Married there. Our children had their communion there. Family funerals, family weddings. It's devastating. It's a loss. It's over 100 years old, this thing. Huh? So there was a lot of history involved in there. My mom and dad had a funeral in there. Oh, no. Uh, it was in the 2000. This is expected to be a lengthy investigation. RCMP do consider this to be suspicious. Now, of course, uh, the burning of this church follows several churches in B.C. that have recently burnt down. Sarah? Yeah, a lot of questions there and really shocking footage to see. All right, thank you, Kim. That's Kim Smith in Mournville for us this hour. If you've been following Canadian news at all, then you know this was not the only incident like this and you know why it's been happening. Going back, I knew I had to capture the remains. I wasn't sure how close I'd be able to get or if it had all been cleared already, but I wanted to see it anyway. I also wanted to see how the rest of the town had changed too. Let's take a look.
I hope you enjoyed those images. For me, they are bittersweet. Uh, I'm happy to be able to have them, but I'm sad to see a beautiful building tied to my past go like that. I'm not religious, but that church was something that I looked fondly at while I was growing up. Now let's talk about this episode's lens and film. First, the lens. The Nikkor 50mm f1.8G contains seven elements with six groupings. The aperture utilizes seven rounded blades and can stop down to f16. The minimum focusing distance is 1.5 feet or 0.45 meters and features a 58mm thread for filters. Out of the box it comes with lens caps, a hood, and a very crappy lens pouch. Uh, this lens is super quiet while focusing and that's due to its silent wave motor. The M A setting means that you can adjust the focus manually without switching to manual. Uh, this basically means that if you adjust the focus, the motors aren't going to fight with you like on some lenses. Probably the feature that people talk about the most is that it has an aspherical lens element, which reduces aberrations. That's something you don't even get with the f1.4. I've also watched some comparison videos and the f1.8 is arguably sharper. If you aren't into plastic lenses, this may not be the choice for you, but that also means it's light, weighing just 185 grams. That is about the same weight as an adult hamster or four cinnamon pop-tarts. Nikon's website calls it a DSLR standard. I would argue it's just as good for compatible SLRs. If there is one constant in my photography, it has been 50 millimeter lenses. I think everyone should have one in their collection. If you own a more modern Nikon, I think the Nikkor 50mm f1.8G is a fantastic choice. Just be sure and find a compatibility list because not every autofocus Nikon will be able to take it. The Nikon f5, f6, n75 and n80 will work, as well as the f100 of course, not to mention every Nikon DSLR. The one thing film photographers may not be able to live without is an aperture ring. If you can't, I'd look into the 50mm 1.8D instead. Now let's talk about the film. Adox CHS50 is a discontinued film. I got my role from a viewer named Al. Al sent me a bunch of great films, all frozen since new, and this film expired in 2014 is no exception. Here's what the box looks like. It says art series on the one side, and then on the other side here, there's a sticker that says expiry date February 2014. So it's less than 10 years expired. Adox on the side with the ISO and the name of the film. Again, Adox art series on the one end here. Opening it up, you get a simple film canister with one of those overhanging lip lids. And here's the film itself. You can see that the film has this weird blue hue. Really interesting. Uh, I haven't seen anything like that before. And yeah, Pretty basic film canister with uh, white and silver and green printing on the label. CHS stands for Cubicrystal Herodisperse Single Layer, which means the emulsion is made up of classic cubic crystals that are mixed in different sizes and coated in one layer. What does that mean? No idea. But from what I've read, the film was made with a classic look in mind to give a similar appearance as films made in the 1950s. The film itself has this dark blue coloring to it, and when I poured out the pre-wash, I also got a deep blue coloring in the water. I developed my roll using Kodak D76 stock with a time of 6 minutes and 30 seconds. Loading film onto the reel was fairly easy. There was some curl, but not as much as, say, Kodak Tri-X, which will spring back into place. This film will unravel given the chance, so that's something to be careful of when handling and loading it in the dark. The film base reminds me of Agfapan APX25. It's rigid, seems thinner, and is slightly harder to cut than films you may be familiar with. I like the results, but I honestly could have used a bit more in the mid-tones. What you do get is a lot of highlight recovery. Even though I didn't use a filter, I was surprised to see detail in the sky on some of my frames, but I was a little put off with the steep drop off from mid-tones to shadows to blacks. You might be into this look, but if you're used to say Ilford HP5, you're in for quite a shock. Shooting at ISO 50 was fairly easy, but I was outdoors, midday, 
and with a lens that had a max aperture of 1.8. This is an outdoor film or an indoor one with a tripod. While I'm not sure if I'd shoot with it again, I am intrigued by Adox and I would like to try some of their other films. Well, that's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please consider subscribing. And if you're already subbed, perhaps you'll consider joining me on Patreon. I have a brand new exclusive series on there where I show off my thrift hauls of camera gear. Uh, you can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter. And until next time, stay classic.